Yeah. This is why, you know why I'm, I'm against, I'm vehemently against poly and polyamory is for exactly that reason. You're not going to eliminate entirely the jealousy response. And I don't, you want to know why cuckold pornography is so popular right now? Like you watching your, you know, what Jack Murphy watching his girlfriend get railed or, or destiny or whoever, right? You want to know why, why poly is so popular right now is because it's, this half measure is this meeting is it's this idea that uh your wife's not never it, it ain't never going to be satisfied with you and so you got to go and like uh, commission a bull to come and bang her out for her, for her right and that if you if you don't do that then you're not secure in your masculinity because only a really masculine guy is, is the dude who's gonna you know let some other dude like you know ride her to glory right in front of you while you're fucking you know there with your dick in hand right that the reason why that that's a, a thing right now is because there's so many guys because I would I would lay that at the feet of social media first and foremost but I would also say we it's a generation that has been raised on pornography but it's also uh, one that uh, the where men who are in that 80 percentile who are married realize that they are never going to be like their, their, their wives are either going to cheat on them or they're going to allow them. They're going to be good with it. Right. They're going to be okay with, with a, another guy fucking their wife or fucking their girlfriend. And they realize that that's really the only opportunity they have. So they've got to find a way to sort of um, rationalize it. They've got to find a way to reconcile that. So they've got two options. Either they can, you know, continue to be the, uh, five foot four inch, um, you know, white kid with a beard and, and, and a, and a four inch dick and they might make a lot of money and the girls with, uh, you know, the, he, he, he got a girl who's out of his league. Uh, let's just say, I don't believe in leagues, but like he got a girl who's out of his league. And I think on some level of consciousness on some level, like on an instinctive level, he realizes that she's going to eventually cheat on him anyways. So he can either be good with that or he can sort of live in this, you know, knowledge that he's, she's only having obligated sex with him and she's miserable and whatever. And she's probably going to end up cheating on him because he, she has more opportunities than he's ever going to have. And so therefore, if he wants to be in a monogamous relationship or a semi monogamous relationship, he's going to have to be cool with having her get railed by some other dude. Right. Okay. Well, how do you, how does a guy go about doing that? And this is where my point of contention is with like a guy like Dr. Jeffrey Miller. Okay. It's this idea that you have to eroticize your jealousy instinct, which I think is, first of all, it's dangerous. Uh, and second of all, I'm not sure how well most guys can do that. Now, of course, what guys will tell you who are in the poly thing, like a guy like destiny, a guy like Jack Murphy, a guy like, uh, who's that kid on, on fresh, a Trillstein, the way that the, the way that they rationalize that is, hey man, they they can go do whatever they want to, man. It's like, so what's the difference between that guy and Jack Murphy? What's the difference between uh, Destiny and Jack Murphy? We 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 ran Jack Murphy out of town because I mean probably because he's trying to pretend to be like Mister Holy and Mister you know he's trying to be Tradcon dude. Yeah, I'm, so there's some duplicity. Maybe that's the difference. At least at least it's above board with <laughs> with a uh, with Trillstein and, and Destiny, but when you look at Polly from a beta male perspective, they're not doing anything. I mean, from a practical perspective, I mean, they can rationalize it however they want to, but from a practical perspective, they're doing the same thing that 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 Jack Murphy was doing. Certainly, Destiny is. I don't know. I don't know what uh, Trillstein's sexual habits are, but uh, you can you could certainly make the case, or there's certainly uh, parallels, let's say, between Jack Murphy and and Destiny, at least in their uh, what, what they profess to be their. I don't I don't have a camera in their <laughs> their bedroom, but that's uh, it, it's essentially the same thing. And but one guy is ostracized, and the other guy gets another spot in, on you know two three spots on Fresh and Fit. And we talk about that, and it's like, well, why are we going to why are we going to put the cuck beard on guys who, like, why, why are we going to put the cuck beard on Will Smith for a, a, a thumbnail? Because we think he's a cuck for smacking Will, uh, you know, Chris Rock at the Oscars. But we don't do that with Destiny. We don't do that with Trillstein. We don't do that with guys who are like openly admittedly saying, yeah, I let other dudes fuck my women. 
then why would you be with them? Like, why would you even imply the contract of being in, in any, any way exclusive with that person? Why not just simply spin plates? That's that. So it's not like you can talk. Oh, it's not ethical. It's not this. It's not biblical. It's not moral. What? Okay. But put that. I'm not saying you're right or you're wrong. Just put that t- discussion to the you know, let's table that for a moment here. From a practical perspective, you're doing the same thing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same fucking thing, man. One's a hero. One's not. One gets you clicks. And the other one is like, we haven't heard from him in almost a year after he came at Sydney Watson, right? And now the cuck beard is the universal sign for cuck culture. So why are we, we're okay with Trillstein letting his two girlfriends get fucked, but we're not okay with Jack Murphy, who is essentially doing the same thing with one girl, I guess. I don't know. You know, putting a dildo up his butt, who knows. But we're okay with that. I mean, if, if, uh, practically speaking, you know, action-wise, behavior-wise, that's what we're doing. So there has to be some sort of rationale for guys who are okay with that. And how do they get to that point? Why is cuckoldry porn such a, such a big thing? Why is poly even like being discussed? Like this generation, like, I don't think people really realize, like maybe the last two generations, I guess, like discussing like poly or open relationships that, you know, that was something that you did at like, you know, seventies key parties back in the swing in seventies, maybe at studio 54 or something like that. Uh, back when the sexual revolution was in full swing before AIDS was a thing. Um, but now, you know, we have more access. We can actually develop that sort of swing and singles thing a little bit more now, but we, we try, we have to find a ways to rationalize it. And one of the ways, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Miller, um, has proposed is that guys need to find a way to eroticize that jealousy instinct because you're going to ha- you're going to be jealous and only cool intellectuals who are, you know, more evolved humans can, you know, males can do that because it's usually the men because men are the ones who have that violent response as, as two bit user here was just saying a minute ago, it's like, yeah, we have that flash of jealousy and rage just from a masseuse or masseur or whatever touching his wife. Well, why, why is that, why is that instinctual? And should we eroticize it? Should we condition ourselves to be cool with that? Should we, you know, gaslight ourselves into thinking that we're more, um, you know, secure and and strong and, and, and a surprising source of security from my masculinity. I think that was the, the title of his, of of Jack Murphy's uh, essay, you know, a surprising uh, source of security, right? letting my girlfriend get fucked by a guy on Tinder. There has to, you have to rationalize it for yourself. That has to gaslight yourself into thinking and into, into tamping down that jealousy instinct until you can't do it anymore. And you guys probably don't remember this girl, but her name was, uh, she was a, a congresswoman from Cal, I believe California. Her name was Katie Hill. And she was like an outspoken feminist, you know, and has been like run out of town because she was in a relationship with one of her staffers who was female, by the way. And um, the she lived a quote unquote poly lifestyle and she was married to a guy and she was cool or he was cool with it as long as she was banging other chicks and he could get involved. But the minute another dude came into the picture, into their open relationship, that's when he lost his shit and he started outing her. And she basically it killed her political career. Katie Hill, go look at K A T I E Hill. Go look at look up that it was like I think it was 2020 or 2019. I'm not really sure. She got ran out of town, and she's you know she mouths off now and then on as a pundit you know on MSNBC once in a while. But the reason why she's not a congresswoman anymore is because of the fact that that guy that she was married to couldn't reconcile or couldn't eroticize well enough his jealousy instinct. So. I mean, that, that was one example, probably many, like guys who don't have any options, guys who don't have the opportunity, as I said before, when their wives are, or their girlfriends do have opportunity and they figure they're going to cheat anyways, or they're going to lose out on their investment with that woman, then the best thing in their minds at that point is to sort of reconcile and, and uh, rationalize and program themselves and condition themselves to be cool with it. And how do you do that? Well, you got to be okay with her having a bull come over and fuck her every now and then. And if you can make money off of OnlyFans or, or whatever, then you're that much better off, right? 